Hello, my name is Kimmo Järvinen, and I will present our work Speed Reading in the Dark, Accelerating Functional Encryption for Quadratic Functions with Reprogrammable Hardware. This is a joint work between Milad Vahadori and myself from University of Helsinki and Tilan Mark and Miha Stoppar from XLAV. The work was done in uh, the EU project Fentech. We will go through this uh, architecture for the first hardware accelerator for functional encryption uh, for quadratic uh, functions. It is a hardware software co-design designed uh, particularly for Xilinx Zinc Ultrascale MPSOC devices, but it's also usable for other uh, such uh, SOCs. Uh, the accelerator is optimized particularly for the decryptions of this functional encryption scheme. And this uh, de decryption operation requires pairings and discrete logarithm computations. Uh, one of the central contributions of our work is this uh, uh, a parallel version of uh, Shanks' uh, famous baby step, giant step discrete logarithm algorithm. And uh, we utilize pre computations and parallel processing in that that algorithm. What we show is that uh, our implementation provides large speedups compared to software only implementations. Uh, we get uh, several tens or even hundreds of times faster results than uh, a software library called GoFay designed for the same, same operation. We also showcase two uh, practical use cases in the domain of machine learning, uh, in particular image classification, and, and show that uh, these uh, speed, speed ups translate also to practical use cases. So what is functional encryption? Uh, if you think about traditional encryption, it's all or nothing in the sense that whoever has the decryption key, DK here, uh, gets access to the full plain text and sees it entirely. Uh, after decrypting the ciphertext. Then again, if you don't have this uh, decryption key, you get nothing at all. Or maybe you know something, something about the length of the message or something, but actually the contents are completely hidden from you. Uh, functional encryption, then again, uh, provides more fine-grained control. So it's possible to hand out uh, decryption keys that allow to compute a specific function from the ciphertext. So a function of the plain text when given this ciphertext. And uh, this uh, decryption key allows to compute this function, but, but doesn't uh, give any other information about the X. Every time that some, somebody talks about computations with uh, ciphertext, one of course thinks about homomorphic encryption. But uh, in this sense, homomorphic encryption is more like traditional encryption that uh, when, whenever you decrypt, you get the entire plain text. And if you cannot decrypt, then you get nothing at all. But the functional encryption actually lets you compute something, but that doesn't reveal the entire contents of the message. So then the question is, of course, how uh, or, or what kind of functions can we compute? And in general, uh, general functions are possible in theory, but not in practice. So in, uh, in practical sense, we are limited to very uh, basic functions. So there is functional encryption for inner products that, and those schemes allow you to compute inner products and like uh, you can compute means or weighted averages or these kind of very basic, basic statistics over, over a vector of data. Uh, functional encryption for quadratic functions lets you compute already uh, quadratic functions and uh, can lead to much uh, much more powerful uh, practical applications. And uh, the focus of this work is, is the is, uh, FEQF. And uh, as we will show, we can actually do some simple machine learning tasks even with these, these kind of uh, schemes. So here is a, a small example of what, what kind of uh, problems or practical problems could be solved with functional encryption. So we have a setup where we have a, a patient and then uh, an, uh, 
in this case, two do different doctors. They, they might be, for example, from different specialties. So it might be a cardio cardiologist and an oncologist, for example. And now uh, keys are given for the, for the patient to encrypt data and uh, two different keys are, are given to the doctors. So uh, the cardiologist can compute the function F and uh, the oncologist the function G. And now the patient may uh, encrypt her, her data, like genomic data as an example, and uh, send it to a server. Then uh, the cardiologist can, can query this uh, genomic data with, uh, for, uh, and see, for example, if there is some, some uh, heart, heart uh, condition based on the uh, patient's uh, genetic data. And uh, the oncologist can, can search similar things, but for other di diseases. So in this case, for example, some cancer. And uh, nobody, not the doctor and not even the, even the server has full access to the patient's genomic data. And the central computation in this kind of a setup is the decryption function of this uh, functional encryption scheme. And uh, that's uh, the motivation why this work also focuses mostly on the on the decryption operation, or uh, because it's it's quite uh, seldom when these keys needs needs to be generated. So so there is probably quite little need for accelerating the key generation function, and then a uh, patient encrypts her data maybe once or very seldom in any case. And it's also very likely that, that uh, patients can't have access to hardware accelerators. So, so this uh, decryption operation that is both frequent and, and done in a centralized server is, is a, a very good candidate for hardware acceleration. Okay, so let's take a look on the uh, actual decryption algorithm that we focus on in this work. So this is uh, from a scheme, uh, described in, in, a, in a paper titled Reading in the Dark, and that's also the origin of, uh, of the title of our paper, Speed Reading in the Dark, because we, we do that faster with our hardware acceleration. And uh, if we look at that, this uh, decryption algorithm, it takes as an input uh, the a specific format uh, ciphertext, and then uh, a decryption key for a specific quadratic function f. And uh, then it computes uh, a number of, of pairing computations. Actually, the number of, of uh, pairings that are required in the decryption depends on the uh, length of the ciphertext vector. So how many, many uh, values are encrypted in the, in the ciphertext vector. Uh, then uh, there are some uh, finite field arithmetic operations required uh, also, but those are rather insignificant if you look at, at, the, at the big picture. And uh, actually, the, the performance of this algorithm is mostly determined by, by the fairings and, importantly, the final discrete logarithm that needs to be computed in the end. So this uh, discrete logarithm uh, returns uh, an, an integer value as, a, as an output, and that's uh, the, the output of the quadratic function that we want from to compute with this uh, algorithm. And uh, our work has focused, or the novelties in our work are, are, are concentrated on this uh, discrete logarithm computation. So in this presentation, I will focus mostly on that, but the details about how we compute the pairings are, are available in the, in the paper. So uh, a discrete logarithm is the problem of finding x when given alpha and beta in some cyclic group, uh, and beta is such that it's alpha to x. Uh, a famous way to, to solve this problem is the Sanks uh, baby step giant step algorithm, which uh, is based on this e equality here. Uh, so once a match is found for where uh, some power of alpha equals uh, this right hand side, then we know what the x is. And the uh, algorithm splits in two, two phases. So there is this uh, baby step phase, 
which uh, computes uh, powers of alpha and stores them in a, in a table. And then the actual giant step phase is, uh, is the one where we try to find the matches. Okay, and uh, the uh, discrete logarithms that need to be computed in this uh, decryption algorithm are actually quite special in the, in the sense that, that uh, we know that the X is in a specific bound, which is very small compared to the, the size of the cyclic group. And uh, so, so in most cases, we know that the, the function that we evaluate can return output values in the interval from minus b to positive b. And uh, it's also the case that this uh, alpha value is, is fixed in this. It's a domain parameter. So, so uh, we can pre-compute this baby step, the, the table t. And although the size of, of the uh, cyclic group is, is uh, huge, and, and that would prevent us from computing the whole t, we can, can still compute the t up to some uh, predefined bound. And in this uh, word, we didn't work, we denote that by bt. And then it allows to uh, allows us to evaluate all functions that satisfy this inequality. It's also uh, noticeable that uh, we don't have to actually store the entire alpha to j, but it's suffice to, to only store some, some, some bits of that, that uh, value as long as all the entries in, in t are unique. And, and this helps us to save a lot of uh, space, which is very, very central in this, this work because we are actually computing huge tables. Um, then our architecture that I will present in the following slides is a, is a parallel architecture. So, so it is of interest to, to parallelize this algorithm. And actually this, uh, both, both of the steps are, are uh, can be fully parallelized in the sense that uh, if we have n cores, we get almost n times uh, speed up. Um, and the, the, the resulting algorithm that uh, takes these, uh, this uh, list into account is actually quite complex. It's uh, about one page algorithm. So I spare you from that and, and uh, you can take a look in the paper if you are interested. Okay, so, so here is the high-level architecture of our, uh, our accelerator. So as I, I mentioned, it's a hardware software co-design, so that there is a soft, software side, so you can see this ARM core here. And then there's a, a hardware side, which is implemented uh, on an FPGA fabric. Um, the most important uh, components in the, in the hardware domain are these n parallel processing cores. So n is 16 in our implementations case, but, but basically it, it could be another, another value for n could be used as, as well, but we filled the FPGA and, and that meant that we could fit in 16, 16 parallel cores. Uh, these cores are, are optimized uh, for speed and area, which allows us to, to optimally use the, the resources that we have available. The uh, actual architecture of, the, of this course is based on a pairing coprocessor architecture designed by Mila and myself and published in FPL last year. So it's uh, optimized for pairing computations, but uh, as it ultimately relies on the efficient finite field arithmetic, it can be also used to efficiently compute the other parts of the decryption algorithm, including the, the discrete logarithm computation. Here on the hardware side, we also have a, a hierarchy of, of uh, local memory. So there, is, uh, there, are, there are local memories in the, in the CP cores, but there is also shared memory, which allows the CP cores to exchange data with each other. The, the main purpose of, of this memory hierarchy is to reduce the amount of data that needs to be transferred between the software and hardware domains, because that uh, communication would easily become a bottleneck <clears throat> if not 
not implemented with a, a smart uh, mem a hierarchical local memory in the hardware side. Uh, in the software side, there's this ARM core that uh, takes care of uh, general control and flow management, but also certain what I call auxiliary processing, meaning operations, small operations that need to be computed, but uh, which are either not supported by the hardware domain or that doesn't pay off to be, to be uh, delegated to the hardware at that point. Uh, an important component here is also this DDR memory, which is actually not part of the Xilinx chip, but it's, uh, it's on, the, uh, on the same board. And this uh, large DDR memory is used for storing the pre-computed key. And actually we used almost two gigabytes of that memory. So that's, that's a very central component in this computation. Okay, so let's uh, take a look on the re results next. So we compare this, uh, the results of our work against the GoFe library, also a result of the Pentec project that implements the same uh, FEQF scheme. Uh, but in, in addition to the original GoFe, we also uh, compare against optimal GoFe, uh, sorry, optimized GoFe, which is uh, the same GoFe library but uh, where we have implemented discrete logarithms with our discrete logarithm computation with uh, pre-computations. And uh, we can see from here that actually this, uh, this algorithm has a very significant impact also in the software performance. So you can see that, that with the normal original GoFe, the discrete logarithms quickly start uh, start uh, to dominate here and, and the uh, decryption times grow to impractical levels quite quickly because all of these samples here are actually rather small in practical sense. So, so in some cases there is only one value in the, in the largest 20. But, uh, but as soon as the, the, the size of the result grows, the Coffe library gets slow. With the uh, new discrete logarithm algorithm, we get uh, significant speed ups, but, but uh, by using the hardware accelerator, we get, uh, get even much better, better results. So, so we get, get uh, speed ups of over 1000 times compared to original GoFe, but almost 20 times even, even against the optimized one. And it's uh, so that the, the bigger the functions are, the, the more the more uh, benefit you get from the uh, hardware accelerator. And that's uh, in a way good uh, showcase of, of the importance of hardware acceleration for practical use cases, because in those cases, the, the functions usually are on the, on the larger end. Uh, in the beginning, I said that we also tested our system with uh, practical or, or practical like scenarios or use cases. And we tested them with two different uh, image classification use cases. So, so the, the setup is such that, uh, for example, in the first case, we use this MNIST, famous MNIST database of uh, images of handwritten digits. And the task there is to normally to, to give this image to a computer and, and it should then say which, which uh, digit is, is uh, there in the image. In this case that we have, the, the, the task is much uh, more difficult because we actually encrypt the image. So it's not, not possible to visually even, even look at that and tell which, which Im image there is. And what, uh, with the functional encryption, it's still possible to do this machine learning computation by, by giving out 10 different, different uh, decryption keys one that, that uh, gives the, the, the likelihood that the, the digit is zero, the one that it's one and so on all, all the way up to, the, to the nine. And in this example, for example, we see that the, the decryption with the key that they, the, the gives the likelihood with, for, the, for the digits eight gives the largest output. And then that means that the, that the image in that encrypted image is uh, likely to be eight. 
the fashion MNIST uh, database is, is similar, but instead of handwritten digits, it contains uh, images of different kind of clothes like T-shirts, trousers, and so on. And the task is to is to find out which one that is. There there are also ten different classes in that case. So in both cases, actually, the, the images are are uh, twenty eight times twenty eight pixels, and uh, contain different ten different classes. But because the uh, task of uh, of um, classifying these handwritten digits is much much easier, actually uh, the computation or the, that is required there is is much simpler. So we we can use n is forty as a parameter in that case, and we get uh, on average twenty nine bit outputs from the from the computation. And actually, this this kind of a model gives a ninety seven percent accuracy. In the case of uh, MNIST, we have to use bigger parameters. So we have n is 128 on average 37 bit outputs, and still we get less than 90% accuracy. So if we look at the uh, literature, so original uh, GoFair was reported to, to uh, have this MNIST case done in less than 20 seconds. Um, when we do that with optimized GoFair, we get uh, on average 1.3 seconds for that computation for the MNIST, and uh, fashion MNIST is uh, done in 5.2 seconds. With our accelerator, we are uh, 0 0.09 seconds for the MNIST case and uh, about 0 0.4 seconds for the fashion MNIST. So we get uh, 15 times speed up, which is uh, something that already has a lot of practical significance. So as a conclusion, what we showed was that uh, functional encryption for quadratic functions benefits significantly from hardware acceleration. Although we focused on, on a, one specific scheme in this uh, work, also the other FBQF schemes that have been proposed are actually very similar in structure. So they use pairings and discrete logarithms. So we expect that our results can be used or, or our results generalized to them also rather, rather easily. And uh, our accelerator can be used for, for different FEQF schemes with only very minor modifications. If you are interested in, in the paper or, or the, the details about the architecture, algorithms and for example discussion on side channel attacks please please see the see the paper okay thank you very much and uh, questions can be asked either during the online session or mailed directly to me to this email address kimmo.u.jarvenen at helsinki.fi thank you very much for your attention